What are some of the other cons? Um, I spend a lot of time thinking, which sometimes can be good and sometimes can be bad. You know, it, it is a bit of like a personalized torture chamber. Dark. I know. Hi. Hello. Who is this? Uh, this is Pomegranate. How can I get you today? Well, I wanted to call in, talk about my experience of being an Uber driver. Oh, okay. How's that experience treating you? Um, it's a mixed bag. Okay. Tell us, tell us more. Uh, do you want to know the good part of the bag or the bad part? I like to start with the bad so that we can end with the good. Uh, okay. Um, well... Uber doesn't seem to care very much about its drivers mm. and seems to prioritize the riders, uh, which is like understandable because obviously rider safety is very important, but like often we get the short end of the stick. Like mm. with pay, we usually make about like half of what the riders pay, sometimes less. If we're lucky, maybe more. Um, which means the riders end up paying like way out of ass. And we don't really get it. And then so like when you when you're already paying like when it's busy forty bucks for a ride, you're not inclined to tip. Uh, which I I like I get it, you know, you're paying a lot of money, but it just sucks on my end because I end up making like fifteen, seventeen bucks out of that. You know, right. And is that counting your gas, too? Oh, yeah. Uh, there actually was a fuel surcharge for when, like, the fuel prices got all crazy and stuff. But they just removed that now. Uh, but I, I would honestly bet money that the riders are still paying that extra, like, fuel surcharge. Mm. But it's just, like, not telling them anymore. But we're mm. definitely not getting it. Um, And now... So 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 if I get a ride for forty bucks, you make about twenty or or fifteen even. Yeah, fifteen to twenty, depending. There's like things like searches if it's busy, uh, and if like the customer tips, I'll probably make a little more. But that that seems pretty accurate. Uh, is there a difference between Uber and Lyft with this kind of uh, thing? Uh, it kind of depends on market. I think Uber pays a little less because, or not Uber, Lyft pays a little less because it tends to be a little cheaper, at least yeah. where I'm at. But I don't do Lyft, so I'm not not too positive. Um, what are some of the other cons? Um, I spend a lot of time thinking, um, which sometimes can be good and sometimes can be bad. Yeah. Uh, Uber driving led to arguably the worst thing that's happened to me which kind of sucks but it's not really like i guess uber driving's fault it just is okay. connected in my brain now so i resent it a little bit for it um you don't have to tell us what it is but if you want to you can sure um so i was last year engaged and I was Uber driving around and I don't really eat the healthiest. So I started to get, you know, the, the stomach rumbles and I was like, you know, I am going to go home and use the bathroom, go home a little early. And I came home and my fiance was in the bedroom uh, and she like quickly got off her phone when I came in and I could immediately tell like, you know, obviously she's my fiance. I kind of know her face expressions pretty well. She was very like off guard and nervous. And I was like, hey, what's uh, what's up with that? She tried to like, you know, play it off. And I kind of continued to press on, you know, because so, I knew something was up. And I was worried I like caught her cheating on me or something, you know. But as it turned out, she was actually um on the phone with her sister uh talking about like 
uh, basically a plan of like moving out because her sister lives a few hours away. Um, so it would have had to been like planned ahead of time and whatever, but so I was basically sidewinded by that, which kind of sucked. And then after we ended up separating, Uber driving was like the only thing I could do for money. Cause it was like my primary source of income, but like driving around in my car after we had like spent a lot of time you know together in it like i pretty much drove everywhere with her i would just be like the whole time that's all i could think about you know hmm. so when you said that uber led to the worst thing that ever happened to you do you in 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 what way do you see uber's involvement in this uh, I think it was the amount of time that I was kind of starting to have to spend doing it, like being out of the house. Because normally, mm. like, I would work when she would be at work, but it kind of switched over when I did Uber. Mm. And I don't know, I think that empty space just kind of like, because we, we definitely had issues and I, like, don't fault her at all for like ending things you know like there's no yeah. really fault there like i can understand it i i would be remiss to say there's not like i guess a little bit of disappointment there and just like being engaged at all you know it's just like a very big commitment and so you like, feel you know, like you feel like a lot of the the issues that caused her to want to leave are rooted in the fact that you were always out of the house and couldn't spend enough time there? No, absolutely not. Uber Uber is just catching the strays of my emotional turmoil. And as a, as a way of coping, I just like kind of resent it. And also just the amount of time that I spent driving in it. And I just mm -hmm. like sit and think about things. You know, it, it is a bit of like a personalized torture chamber. Dark. I know. I didn't mean to get all dreary and depressing with it. I, I bet if be you, to I bet if you told this story to the people who are riding with you, you'd get more tips. I, <laughs> I've thought about it before, but I, I am always afraid that I would like cry and then make things really uncomfortable. Yeah, you might you get it. Listen, if you drop some tears during this story, you might get an even fatter tip. Honestly, I, I, that is that is very very true. But listen, man, you got your emotional so, turmoil. At the very least, use it for financial gain somehow if you have the ability to. Hey, that's kind of been my my goal most of my life is just take <laughs> advantage of all this bad stuff and yeah. find a way to financially benefit from it. Yeah. Um, okay, so so you felt as though your car was like this prison that reminded you of your relationship failing? Oh, yeah. Like, there was a, a sticker on it, like a uh, pricing sticker from the store she worked at when we first started, like, hanging out, and she, like, slapped it on there when she got in my car. Yeah. And I, like, tried to take it off when we first broke up. And then I was, like, unable to finish it. So it was just, like, halfway on there. Mm -hmm. The good um, news is I have a new car now. So I'm at least no longer in that car. That's what I was going to ask, is if you got a new car. How much of your decision to get a new car was based off of the fact that your old one reminded you of your ex? Uh, Honestly, not a whole lot. I had to anyways, because it was, like, on its way out. Uh, coincidentally at the worst time like her and I were talking about getting a new car and like we went to a few dealerships and everything when it happened mm -hmm. and then I think two weeks after she left it like broke down completely mm -hmm. and then I it got towed by the cops even though it was parked in someone's yard with their permission and then I had to sign it over to the like tow people that impounded it because uh, I didn't have the 300 some dollars to get it out 
And then I found out through the people I got my car from that they would have paid for it to get out because they were going to give me like $1,600 for that car. Oh, really? But I had already signed it over. And I was just like, So you're just getting fucked after fucked after fucked. (laughs) Yeah, pretty much. Okay. So listen, pomegranate, tell me you got a new car. You're out on the road. You kind of came into this and you told the call screener. You didn't even mention anything negative, actually, when you talked to the call screener, apparently. It says that you wanted to discuss, like, a lot of the positive things. So now that we've covered the emotional turmoil, I want to hear the positive. What sorts of things have you gained from this experience? Uh, Yeah, I'll give you the positive, but I will be honest about that. I did come in here with the full intention of being positive. But then I smoked a little weed before I got on here and I like started spiraling a little bit. And I was like, okay, well, it's not all positive. I can't just lie about it. Well, I was going to say, I I, I don't really care either way. I just wanted the truth of the experience. And I'm glad that you came here with that. Yeah, for sure. Uh, The positive, basically, it's just been nice to get to meet a bunch of people and remember how much that like... A, people can be very similar. Like, I feel like I meet a lot of copies of the same exact, like, archetypes. And then you get, like, massive, massive, out-of-field, like, random people that are just extremely unique. And I feel like I get these interactions that I would never get otherwise, you know? Yeah. Um, all right, well, I, I have, that's a deep thing that you're talking about and it's something that i feel like i've gotten a lot of experience in as well you know doing this gecko thing um tell me from your perspective you say that a lot of people are kind of copies of each other what what sorts of through lines or similarities or archetypes have you noticed are are consistent in your observations um what are some consistent archetypes Um, I do a lot of driving in a college town and all of the fashion students are very, very similar in the way that they get in the car, uh, specifically where they stare at for the majority of the ride and how they just generally like don't talk and avoid talking. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I guess that would be one example. Um, a lot of like older white businessmen behave very similarly. I had, I think a week ago, I was in a more expensive area and I picked these three guys up from this restaurant and I was driving them like 40 some minutes back to their hotel. And they were just talking about this like, whole world of business that I have zero concept of. Just all these numbers and this guy's a dumbass if he makes this call and they're gonna kill you for that. And like how they were like dissect they're having a meeting at this restaurant, how they were like dissecting everyone's reactions to everyone like everything everyone was saying. Yeah. Like, you know, did you see how he laughed when you talked about those stats and what it was capable of and yada yada and all this just big scary big number stuff and like millions and millions of dollars and i was just staring forward the whole time and i got called ma'am like seven times by the guy in the back seat which like it doesn't bother me you know i get it i have very long hair it happens often the part that bothers me is when they realize that i'm like not and then they're like really weirdly apologetic about it and it just <laughs> it makes it a thing how do you make like like what it what is the difference between apologetic and weirdly apologetic in that scenario? They like they act like they just shot my kid in front of me like by insinuating that I was a woman. I was like the greatest offense. Like they just called me a slur basically, you know? Sure. Um I I don't really get it either, but now it happens infrequently. Did the businessmen tip you? I think like three bucks. It was not a lot. 
Um, now you said something about like a lot of archetypes, but then a lot of left field stuff, a lot of wild sort of sort of characters and uh, non, you know, things that you wouldn't expect. Tell me, tell me one of those. Um, I want to say like a month ago, I got a like complete car full of Canadians that had flew all the way down for a random concert at like a country dive bar because they had apparently like seen the musician before and like they got in and it was like i don't know if they were trying to just do like the canadian character or that's just like how they were but that was a very very fun experience they were incredibly nice and they asked for my number so I could pick them up, like, after the uh, show was done. And I did. And they were just, like, completely hammered. And they were incredibly kind. And they made, like, tons of funny jokes. And I don't know, it was just, like, never expected to really be in that situation, you know? So, wait a minute. They gave you their number to basically pay you for a ride outside of uber yeah i have the guy's number on my phone still yeah oh and i bet you made a lot more money off of that than you would have if you took it through uber oh for sure they like (laughs) they promised that they were gonna tip like a ton of money and then i watched them struggle for like two straight minutes just going through the dollar bills like I don't know if it's just because the currency was different or whatever, but he ended up handing me like 11 ones and he said it was like $50 and I couldn't tell if he was just too drunk to notice or if he's joking and I didn't care. I just had a great time and I was just happy to like, you know, get him back there. I'm pretty sure Canadian money is worth less than American money. So that's actually not even $11. Oh yeah. I just, doesn't it just like look different though? Do they use bigger numbers, different numbers? But the thing is, I feel like the the intention was there. The kind intention oh, was there. Oh, for sure, yeah. Um, so it sounds like you you have a mixed relationship with life, man. I mean, you're in this position where you are encountering all these different people and every day is is an anthology of humanity for you across across its wide spectrum of positivity and negativity. Um, where does your mind stand these days on average? You know, are you feeling good about things? Are you feeling good about life, about people? Um, no, no, I feel pretty poorly about everything to be fully transparent how high are you? Uh, I I was kind of high when it started, but I can kind of feel myself sobering down. Mm. And you feel like when you're uh, more sober is when you are feeling better or worse? Oh, worse. Absolutely worse. Okay. So, hmm. Okay, tell me this then. If you're not feeling good about things, do you think there is anything at all that would make you feel better about things? Um, I'm not sure. I'm kind of figuring that out right now. I feel like my life entering the new year, because, you know, we sign meaning to dates and time and whatnot. I feel like I'm entering a new reset phase, you know? Yeah. Just this new period, and I'm not really sure what direction I want to go in. Mm. Very aimless and uh, grasping for meaning, I think, is a good good way to put it. Mm. Does anything currently give you meaning? Um, I have a cat. That's he's, um, he's reliant on me. He's a little mischievous man, but he's very sweet, and he's my son. Mm-hmm. Um, I have, like, my roommates. They're 
very, very close friend of mine, uh, friends of mine. It's good to have them here. Uh, made it easier, like not being entirely alone, which is nice. Uh, outside of that, not too much. Got to pay off my car loan. I don't know if that's really meaning, but it's a a fake purpose. That's a good reason to get out of bed in the morning. It's some. Yeah. I mean, it's somewhat working. Um, I want to say this because you obviously came into this, um, like you were saying, on a negative point. But you, at the very beginning, you were like, all right, there's the pros and there's the cons. There's the yin and the yang. And you clearly have this ability to recognize and appreciate humanity when you see it. Do you agree with that? Yeah. Are you able to do that often? Uh, I think to a fault sometimes. To a fault? How so to a fault? Uh, I think this is going to, there's no corny way. There's no non-corny way to say this, but I think I struggle a little bit too much with empathy. And like, if I see someone experiencing duress or pain, I tend to be like experience it pretty intensely myself. And it'll just kind of like send me on a spiral. Yeah. Like I I spend, um, I spend a lot of time looking at uh, like historical events and like current event stuff in the world. Yeah. And I, it is a horrible cycle of being aware of how horrible everything can be and usually yeah. is. Oh, well, But yeah. then you're like too aware and it feels like impossible to express joy about everything because you just have like this weight in your chest of all the horrors around you, so to speak. Okay. I have a lot of thoughts about that. Um, but first is, is when you're kind of thinking about the things that are stressing you out and making you not feel good is that a big one kind of all right my therapist tells me that i tend to focus too much on the big instead of the small and okay, the yeah. small being like myself and i instead like like i'll go into therapy and i'll start talking about something related to me but then it yeah. rants into a vent uh, not a vent a rant about you know the police state or whatever i'm uh-huh. going on at the time yeah, man. Um, your therapist is very much on to something. Um, yeah. No, she's because... awesome. She's great. Good, good. Your therapist is very much on to something. If you s- just spend every single day in... there, Here's the thing. There will always... There is a never-ending supply of horrible terrors to worry about in the world. Um, but... The best you can look if you're not going to go out and like be an activist or a scientist or something where you contribute in some small part to this larger problem. If you're not going to do that, the best you can do is take all of this big picture stuff and throw it out of your mind and focus as hard as you can on your own corner of the universe. I feel like this is what your therapist was, was getting at. Like, you know, dude, you, your cat, your roommates, the people that you meet when you're doing your job. I mean, you're in this Uber. One of the things you were talking about is you're in this Uber all the time, connecting with people, interact with other people. Like you come across people every single day, like, like narrow it down to your own life and go, what's the best I can do in my own life. And then all of a sudden, the this grand existential, never-ending problem of the horrors of the universe it turns into something that's more tangible, which is, again, how can I be the best I can be in my own personal life with the people I come inter- I interact with every day? How can I make this Uber drive 
the best for this rider by being nice to them or interacting with them positively? How can I do good by my cat? And and how can I and also by the way, not to be so hard on yourself, how can I do all of this the best I can do it within my own personal energy levels? Right? Because sometimes you walk around and you're you're short and curt with people because you're just because you're just energy is short because you are depressed or you got whatever you got going on. But focusing on how to do the best you can with your own sphere is always going to be a thousand times better of a strategy than reading the fucking news and worrying about how to save all the children in Yemen. Yeah, I mean, that is great advice and I've, I've received similar advice. It's just the putting it into practice that is the part that I get stuck on. Sure. Um, like, I and like, I unfortunately am very uh, activist involved. I don't know a better word to describe that right now. Uh-huh. And like a lot of my social circles uh, consistently revolve around those things and like... Uh-huh. It's a bit hard to escape because it's really one of the only facets of my life that are still like standing, you know. Can I before um, this, like, go ahead, go on? No, you you go ahead, and then I have a thing. Before this, a lot of my identity outside of that pretty much just like focused on my relationship. Mm -hmm. I, I was, a, for lack of a better term, I was a bit of a life guy. Uh huh. And. That also has led to a small identity crisis of trying to find yeah. any sort of other thing. But <clears throat> right, once again, I'm focusing on the, uh, you know, the the dark. I suppose. Um, but so, proceed with what you were going to say. Uh, well, okay. So I mean, even that was a thing that you said just there. You were like, "I was a wife guy, and now the thing." And this, it can be a relationship. It can be a fucking sport it can be whatever it is you these things that you identify yourself with so strongly fuck you because then when they disappear and you realize you don't have a diversified portfolio upon which to build your identity you just you just get you just get fucked you know so yeah building that diversified life portfolio i feel like is so crazy important and um I'll say this, man. If you if you could just do this one thing, like, you ever try it for a day? You ever wake up and you, you, ever, you ever just be like, all right, today, I'm not going to go on Twitter. I'm not going to read the news. I'm going to try as, poss as much as I possibly can today. If not even for a full day, if for a, a one interaction, you go... I'm going to treat this person like they're the first person I've ever met in my life. I'm going to treat this. I'm going to treat talking to this person and being present with this person like it's the most important, like it's as important as saving all the children in Yemen. You know what I'm saying? You try that at least one time or at least one day. It's a place to start. Yeah, so just like. Like go out blind and Uber. I would. I, I wouldn't like do anything any that involves uh, being blind and driving for Uber, but metaphorically blind. Metaphorically blind. That's a stupid blind. joke. Um. Yes. I would try to do whatever it is you can do to just put yourself in the moment. You know, because this happening. This shit happens to me all the time, man. I'm. I'm on Twitter and fucking read it and thinking about every thinking about just everything except for where I am actually at and it's a prime fucking uh recipe for disaster and unhappiness all well, every time oh for sure and again I'm I'm I, I I'll just say this last thing I, I'm I'm I see hope for you in this and obviously I'm not you so I don't know the, 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 the true depth of what you're dealing with. But I just want to say this to you. I see hope for you and your ability to be able to, to do this and to, you know, put the 
entire world away to focus on your own life and your own community and your own people that you interact with because you told all those stories of being in the Uber and these interesting people you meet and and you had a real gracious, perceptive view of the humanity that you were going, that you were encountering when you were doing that. So I know that you have the ability to sink deeply into that, if that makes sense. And so... Yeah. And so I think that a future that involves more of you doing that and less of you um, trying to solve the Israel-Palestine crisis would be, uh, you know, a better thing. It's one of my go-tos, man. Listen, uh, pomegranate. Some people in the chat have been calling you palm. I like that, palm. Palm, I I get uh, palm and palmy a lot. I like Palmy. I like those. I like all of those. Listen, Palm. Uh, do you have any final thoughts about it, the stuff that we've talked about, um, and then anything else you want to say to the people at the computer before we go? I do, but I have one quick question to ask you before I do that. Okay, sure. What is the story with the uh, hold music? I am going to immediately hang up on the next person that asks me that, but not you because. We've gotten too far into it. Is there anything else that you want to say about all the stuff that we've been talking about or to the people at the computer before we go? Uh, Yes. Um, I think radical love is the key to the future. Um, And I think a lot of us spend time focused on punishment instead of uh, rehabilitation and building together forward. Sure. Um, And I think that's an important concept that people should focus on. And I think they should Mm -hmm. examine how they feel when people they care for and don't care for do wrong in the world and how to proceed forward with that. Anything about you? Um, I'm going to try and look at Twitter less. Beautiful. I'm going to, I support you in that goal. Thank you very much. All right, Bob, take care. You too, Gek. I liked that call a lot. I like that concept a lot, and I'm trying to be better at that. I f- I have all these fucking epiphanies, and then I lose them, and go on Twitter. It happens all the time. I'm sure it's happened to you guys too. You have this grand epiphany. You're like, just everything I just said to him. Where I'm like, I can't be thinking about every problem going on in the world all the time. I can't be thinking about all the news. Here's what everyone else in the world is doing. Here's what the popular folks are doing. Here's what this guy that everybody hates said that is just pissing everybody off now. Here's this thing. And it's just, it's everything except my life and what's in front of me. And it's gotta be the grand thing to ignore all of that. And focus intently on being with the people that I encounter in my life and being with the shit with my own life. And how can I best do do my best in that and not worry about any of the other shit, right? You have that grand psychedelic epiphany. And then what do you do? You're on fucking Twitter two days later because because if only it were as easy. That's the, that's the problem with all this stuff. If only it were as easy as you have the epiphany, and now the epiphany is integrated into your life. It rarely is. It's it's, it's you have to actually you have to like go to the mental gym and build your brain by having the epiphany, acting on it for a little bit, fucking up. Then you act on it a little bit longer. You fuck up again, and you just have to just keep trying. It's hard. It's harder than just you have the epiphany and it's in your life takes time to integrate it. That's what I'm working on. All right. Thanks for calling, Pom. Hello? Hello? How are you? Uh, I'm doing good. How are you? How can I get you today? Oh, um, a while. Um, well, so I'm in the middle of remodeling my bathroom and... I only have one bathroom, so I've been 
finding myself like having to pee but too lazy to go outside um so i've just been going to my kitchen and just peeing in the sink and uh like it's way more convenient than i thought it would be and i kind of like it and i don't know if that's bad it doesn't smell or anything which is cool um and i don't have like a lot of people over so I'm not worried about that but this like tonight i did it and i was like i looked in the reflection in the window and i saw my face and i was like is this okay like i don't know started questioning you had a it. moment of self reflection while you were peeing in the sink yeah like i don't know like i i like i've done it like more than like 20 times now but this time i i looked up and i saw my face and i was just like whoa like is this okay i don't know if this is weird or like mm-hmm. you know like i don't know it's just kind of you saw yourself from afar and were able to observe your own actions in a way you hadn't before yeah yeah okay. so all right for th- Bring me back to this moment where you're staring at yourself and you're wondering if it's okay. Tell me more about the thoughts going on in your head. Well, so I have to like get on my tippy toes um, to like, you know, make it over the sink. Um, So I'm usually worried about splashing, but... I was I was making it in and when I looked I was just like you know I'm older um I've you know I feel like I'm too old for that I'm just like what what's what am I doing like I'm a disappointment like why am I peeing in the sink right now like <laughs> like my parents would be so ashamed <laughs> mm-hmm. um yeah uh, also, like, right in front of my sink is a giant window, and I, I don't li- – like, there's no houses behind me. It's just kind of like Mesa, um, but there's an arroyo, and then there's houses past that. And, like, if somebody was just, like, for some reason, like, on a ladder looking over their wall, they they would see me, but it's very unlikely. But that does come across my mind time to time. Um and that's embarrassing because I don't yeah. want some random person to, yeah. But yeah, I don't know. It's just like, why not just walk outside? Ugh. But you do realize that if you go outside and pee, then there's a better chance of people being able to see you than if you were just peeing in your sink. That's true. That's true. Yeah, I was worried about the smell, but it doesn't smell too bad, um, at least now. Um, Like, I run water after I pee, and then I um, sometimes um, turn on the garbage disposal just to be safe. But Mm -hmm. um, I haven't had any problems so far. But, like, also it saves water, and that's, like, a good thing. I I saw on the internet, um, like, flushing uses so much water, and I guess, like, with the sink, um, you know, you don't have to worry about that. That's a good point. But I don't know if I'm just justifying me peeing in the sink is the problem. You said you feel like a disappointment when you look at yourself in the reflection of the window peeing in the sink uh yeah why do you feel like a disappointment what do you feel like is inherently wrong with peeing in the sink well I just like I don't know I feel like a grown man shouldn't like you know whip his stuff out and pee in the sink um 
At least you that's you not alone? like what. Oh yeah. Do you own or rent? Um, rent. How much is your rent? Uh, twelve hundred. I think you've earned the right to pee in the sink. No. All right. That kind of makes me feel better hearing it from you. Um, thank you. Is calling for some kind of reassurance. You know. I um, think okay. Listen, I have, I haven't brought this up yet, but um, you said that you have a bathroom. Yeah. Why don't you just use the bathroom? Uh, uh, we're uh, remodeling the bathroom, so there's no toilet. So we kind of just, you know, it's gone. There's just a hole in the wall, uh, the ground. Um, I could try and pee in the hole. I never thought of doing that. I don't think that works. What but if you I remodeled your toilet to be a sink? Oh, shit. Um, ooh. Well, my guests would be really confused, but... Hmm. Well, I guess I could try and pee in my... Well, that's gone, too. Um, what were you going to say? Uh, the kitchen sink, like where you wash your hands, but that's gone, too. Um, that's just pipes. But there is a hole in the ground. I guess I could pee in that, but I'm, I, I don't know how plumbing works, so I think I, I have no idea. Um, yeah, I think I think that if you were to uh, change your sink, your toilet to be a sink, then uh, the line between what is meant to be peed in and what is meant to have your hands washed with becomes blurred. Oh shit! And those lines were That's made by humans really anyway, cool. because these these inventions, the sink, the toilet, they are made by human beings. Okay, the natural world, people peeing outside, is far, far, far older than these technologies. And uh, these mm. technologies, uh, you know, they they only really have the the intended purposes that we give them. But at the end of the day, both the toilet and the sink are just holes. That lead to places. You know, it's subjective. Mm. So, if I were you, I would keep that in mind when you're making your decision. Um, but also, uh, don't do anything where strangers are seeing your dick. Oh, for sure. No way. I'll think about that. Is there anything else you want to say can, to the uh, people at the computer before we go? Uh, love the podcast. Love you, Lyle. Um, get on, baby. Thanks, man. Take care. Bye. Every once in a while, when I am truly lazy, I will pee in the trash can. Oh, shit. Where does he poop? All right. I'm calling him back. Hello? Hey, man. Real quick. One question. Yeah. Where do you poop? Outside. For now. If you're already pooping outside, then what is this well, dilemma over? You, usually I have to pee like more frequently than I have to poop. So I just like go into the sink. It's fine. Sometimes I pee outside when I'm pooping, but... Um, you know, like I pee like four times a day or five sometimes if I'm drinking. Okay, thanks. All right, I'm glad we called him back. Hello? Hello? Hi. Oh my gosh, is this Miles? Yeah, who is this? Hi, um, my name's Rachel. How are you doing, Rachel? I'm doing really good. I'm very, oh my gosh, I'm very flustered and excited. Um, I recently started listening to your podcast and watching your videos. Wow. 
Hell yeah. I'm, that makes me you? very happy to hear, man. That's awesome. How are you doing? Um, I'm doing good. Uh, I haven't shut up talking about my live show tour thing. Uh, so I'm excited for yes, that. I'm going to be insane. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, I'm going to be, yeah, I, I thought to myself, cause it's like 50 fucking dates. I'm like, all right, well, Dude, if I do like this global, we'll see. We'll see. I mean, listen, man, I'm going to fucking Lisbon, Portugal. I don't know how many people fucking listen to me there, but if I go there and it's, me and three people, and we sit in a circle and do a seance. You know that'll be worth the but, the plane ride. But you know what? Even if it is just three people, I bet you'll make the most out of it. That's what. I, that's how I feel. That's how I feel. I'm excited. Lisbon, Portugal. Come, come see Therapy Gecko live. Anyway, anyway. How are you, Rachel? What's going on? I'm good. Um, I'm just hanging out with my cat and. You know, talking to you, and oh my gosh! So, I, I'm I'm good. I'm good. I have work in the morning, but for right now, I, I'm good. I'm just chilling. It says here that you uh, claim that you are a sore loser, <laughs> and you need advice on being yeah. a good sport. <laughs> okay, well, so yeah, this is like a problem. This has been like a problem always. I, I, I'm just very defensive, I guess, and I, it's always been a thing with me, whether it be like gym class or just video games or even like shit, board games with my family. I'm just, I always want to win and I get so angry when I lose and it's not like I like lash out physically or anything, but like I, I like curse and like, you know, I shit talk and I just I I, I want to get over that because I want to I want to make more friends and like go out and do things I live in the city and I want to you know go play games like there's this cool game shop near me but I don't want to you know like be talking shit to people I just meet and want to be friends with um, okay. and I recognize it's a problem but I kind of can't stop <laughs> So, All right. Well, let's get into if that. Had any advice? Well, all right, let's get into it. Why? I mean, you say that you're very competitive to the point where you don't feel like you can physically restrain yourself from cussing oh, people no, no, out no, at your not... local board night, board game. Night. Well, I I don't like physically assault people. I'm very skinny. I would not be able to. But. I don't know. I just get really heated, like playing like online games or whatever. Like I, I just, I just get so riled up when I lose, man. Okay. I don't, well, I, I get, uh, like. What do you think that is? Like, what? Like, do you have any idea why you are like this? I mean, if I really get into it, I mean, most. So most of my competitiveness, I guess, comes from. Like me being a girl trying to prove myself, I guess. And I don't want to say that's always the case because I'm not, I'm not trying to like, you know, assume that people are like being misogynistic or, you know, but I feel like I kind of like have stuff to prove and I'm like good at things, you know, I want to like, uh. I'm really passionate about things and I, I want to, you know, I want to, it's not to say I'm always losing, but it just, you know, it kind of like hurts my ego, I guess. I don't, I don't know. I don't want to say I'm okay. an ego maniac or All anything. Right. Well, well, <laughs> I'm you a know, little look. mature in that way, I guess. Okay. I well, I mean, look, there's nothing to be afraid of or, or, or you know, in discovering of, of kind of what you are and why you do the things you do. But let me, all right. So let me ask you this here. Um, you say you feel like you're trying to prove something. You feel like, uh, as a girl, you're trying to prove that you know, like you're like you're fighting up against something. Um, I mean, w this competitive nature does it only come out when you are like doing things with like just guys? Like, like if you're playing a board game with a bunch of other girls, like does it does does the competitive? Oh, nature it's still come it's out? anybody. Like, right. I don't want to say being a girl is the only reason. Like, I'll just 
Like, I, even if I'm playing, like, my friends, I'm just, I'm very competitive. And, like, my really good friends, like, know that about me. And, yeah. you know, and, it's like, if I notice myself doing it, I'll try and curb it in. But it's always, like, there. Like, so I, let's talk about I, 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 yeah. this, this <laughs> you have something to prove thing. What is that? What are you? What are you trying to prove? Oh man, you really are a good therapist, huh? Um, <laughs> I it's it's like this whole so. Uh, yeah, yeah. Long story short, um, I was diagnosed with ADHD in like eighth grade, so I, it only like and I'm not saying like it's it's a bad thing because I've 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 gone to an actual therapist and I've you know, seen it as like a positive thing. It's not a detriment to me or anything, but it's kind of always been like, oh, she has that. So, you know, I mean, I was kind of like, I was kind of raised to be like aware of that as a thing. And it's always been like just another thing holding me back. So I don't know, maybe okay. like, I guess that like, it's like an additional thing I got to, and it's so not like this is this again, is uh, sorry to interrupt, interrupt but, but I I just want to talk for a second. Is this um this it sounds like and I'm doing armchair therapy here, but you know I'm gonna just yeah. say something and you tell me if you think it's accurate. Um, <laughs> okay. You uh, their competitiveness comes from like these constant like feeling as though you're railing against stuff, right? Like. Like you want to prove that you know you as a as a woman can do things. You want to prove that you know your ADHD isn't holding you back. Just you're like having there's these things that you're railing against and trying to prove that you're above, and it's driving a lot of this competitive nature. Is that accurate at all? Yeah, that that really kind of summarizes it. Okay, and I guess just okay. like that com like and then I'm like self-aware so then i'm also fighting myself and being like why are you you know why are you like this kind of oh, you know yeah. and oh, I, yeah. like and then i'm aware of how i'm feeling and then i'm just fighting myself at that point so it's just yeah <laughs> I'm yeah just, i guess oh, that's... just like constantly in a circle of bitterness with it Oh, that's the word. I understand what you're saying completely because when you're self-aware about something, you get two hits. You're like, yeah. you're like, uh, why do I? You're because you're you're competitive overly, almost in a way that you feel like you can't even control. And then on top of that, you're pissed off that you can't that you you're just pissed off at yourself for being like this. So it hits you twice. Yeah. And you know what's weird though? Like I've already gone through. Like I'm, I'm an adult. I'm in my, I'm in my late twenties, and just like I've, I've gone through therapy for like the ADHD and blame and guilt and everything. Um, so I'm, I'm glad to say I'm removed from most of that guilt towards it, and just like you know, apologizing and blaming it and blaming myself for a lot of things. But it kind of sucks that it's still there. Like it's still like. You know, in with like the guilt and trying to prove to myself, even though like there's nothing wrong with me, this is just how I am. I'm still kind of doing it, and then I'm just like down on myself for it. Have you ever flipped the chessboard over ugh. at someone? <sighs> I don't think a chessboard because I don't know how to play chess. But I'm not going to sit here and say no <laughs> because they're probably. Yeah has been a point you know what's funny i remember i there's one memory that just came to mind of me trying to play rock band with my family and i think i was trying to do free bird and i missed one too many and like so like i was on the guitar my sister or whatever was on the the keyboard and somebody else was on the mic and i got so mad that i wasn't doing it right I literally restart the song and everybody's like, what the hell? You know, we were just into it. And I'm like, no, I got to get it right. I got to get it right. I know I can do it. I know I can do it. So what's the worst <laughs> incarnation of this that you've experienced? Have you 
Oh, gotten physical? <laughs> have you flipped a Scrabble no, board? No, What's never... the worst it's gotten? Oh, God. I don't... <sighs> like, again, it's never been physical. I think the worst is just, like... I, I don't think the worst is, like, really a, like a specific situation. I just really feel like the feeling of losing... And I guess it's somewhat like the closest thing I can call it is guilt, but I don't think it is guilt. Um, just like I don't know, maybe just like when I'm playing online games, I think the the I don't know if Chad will relate to this, but the latest Splatoon game that released, oh my god, all my multiplayer on that. Like I think I'm pretty good at that, but holy hell, when I lose a match or whatever, it just hurts. Like, yeah. and I know I'm pretty good because they rank you, they place you with other people of your skill. So I'm up there, but oh my gosh, it just like it hurts. And I do not play League of Legends. I am not that bad. So, that so listen, bad. listen, listen, but, listen. <laughs> I, I, sorry, I, I'm I, chat. I, I, it's okay, it's okay. I, I kind of have a thing. I have, an, I have a little bit of a thing. I'm gonna tell you this thing, and you, you tell me if it's sure. helpful or relatable to your situation. Um. This desire to prove yourself. I get mm -hmm. it. I on a I personally have always felt as though not always, but just I don't know. I personally kind of feel like the desire to prove yourself is not a great motivator. Because at the yeah. end of the day, Nobody cares about you. Right. Which is not a mean or sad. It's a good thing. It's a free. It's no, freedom. Like, it's funny you say that because I found myself like most re like within the past uh, year or so. Like it's so easy to fall into like Twitter arguments and just with people online. And I found myself taking a step back on those because like when you're having to type it out. You have that second to like take a breath and think about it. Yeah. And I found myself, you know, thinking, wait a minute, do I really care? No, and then you I just don't. delete whatever I was going to say. Right. And then move away. But I think within right. like games and stuff, it's, it's, it's so much more like within a, you don't have that introspection. So just to the point of, of, um, do I really care? It's like, ugh. A couple, a couple of things, and I'll just. This is kind of be my last like point on this. Is like when sure. you're trying to prove yourself, when you're, and the competitive nature comes from trying to prove yourself to other people. A, the uh, people you're trying to prove yourself to, they don't care. They don't care about you, and even if they do care and they're impressed for a little bit, it there's no lasting positive effect from them being impressed by you and it only lasts so much they're gonna go and live their own life and not be thinking about you and then you're left with actions that you don't even like you don't even like these things about yourself that you're doing to prove yourself to other people who don't even care right so if you mm -hmm. took a second if you took a second in the way that you take a second when you're in a twitter argument and you you know, uh, uh, pause the typing for a second, and you're like, "Huh, I'm trying to prove myself to people that I don't even care about, that don't yeah. even care that much about me and how good I am at any of this stuff." And in doing that, I'm doing shit that I don't even like about myself. Maybe if you took that second, if you found that second, you could calm down and not right knock over the Jenga tower. <laughs> Listen, I don't do that, <laughs> but so let me ask you this, Ben. I um one of my friends that I've made uh, within the past couple of years when I moved out, my parents, um, she wants to do uh, like get into like a volleyball league or a softball league or something. Is there any advice that you have that if I feel that like, you know, guilt that I have to work on coming up in that moment, if I lose or do something wrong, do you have any advice for what I could do? Because She's aware of my competitiveness, and I don't want to be like a detriment to her. Uh huh. 
Well, I mean, uh, I look, I mean, you not wanting to be a detriment to her. I mean, that's just another fuel to add into that. Um, that's just more fuel into your realization when you take a moment. Okay. You know, that's what I would say if I had to advise. Um, it's just to take a moment, right? Just remember that nobody cares. You don't care. Nobody cares. <laughs> just remember that nobody cares. It's a good thing that nobody cares. It's it's not a bad no, I, I, thing. It's a good it's thing that nobody cares. Mantra, and you don't and you don't care about them. What you care about, mm-hmm. your priority is to act like a regular human being. <laughs> I'll try and be normal as I can. And be. and and when you <laughs> take a second and you and it's gonna take a lot of you reminding yourself this. Yeah, it's like a muscle. I'll have to work. It's on like it. a muscle, exactly. It's like a muscle, and you'll grow that muscle. And then once you continue to orient yourself away from your defaults, your defaults are rooted in this anger and desire to prove yourself. Which you, and that's your emotional response, but your logical response is going to be, "How can I serve mm-hmm. me, being a normal, compliant human being in this interaction that I'm having with other people?" Um, you know, you'll, you'll get there. You'll get there. And then add okay. in, I don't want to be, you know, I don't want to fuck this up for my friend. You add that in as fuel to that. You know what I'm saying? That'll definitely help. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, it's, it's, uh, that, listen, that you might have to throw a few controllers logic. and break a few skateboards over your knee before you get there, but you'll get there. Listen, I've never broken a controller. I'm proud to say that. Um, although, I mean, having those wristbands on the Wii definitely did help when they came out. But That's what for. I'm, I, <laughs> I mean, yeah, no, that makes total sense. And it's funny that you, you know, we talked about it being a muscle and everything. Because, oh man, I am just kind of falling back into like that old detrimental habit that I had before I went to therapy before. Like, because I used to be, like, so apologetic and, you know, yeah. just, like, accepting the blame because I have this disorder. And my therapist really had to help me and, like, train me off of that mindset. So it's, yeah. it's kind of weird that I'm back in, like, a somewhat similar cycle for something else, but it's still kind of related. No, it fucking sucks. It's crazy because, um, like, I've had times where, like, so, believe it or not, surprisingly, I've had times in my life where I'm in shape and I'm going to the gym and whatnot and then you stop and then you just get fat and it's like there's a mental thing to that too you have times where you're like very cog it's exactly the same you are cognizant of your life and the way that you're thinking about things because you have this epiphany because you did ayahuasca or whatever it is and you're kind (laughs) of holding that for a little bit and then you slack off and then all of a sudden you're you know um cursing listen I can keep you on the phone for like I could keep you on the phone for like another two hours straight about motivation alone because I have zero. <laughs> but that's well, a whole Rachel, other topic. Is there anything else you want to say to the people at the computer before we go? Um, no, just uh, I guess just to take away from this, breathe, uh, be nice to each other. Um, I don't know. Uh, my cat says hi. I guess. Um. No, I just, my only other question uh, would be, because I don't know if you've answered this before, um, but since I'm like kind of a new viewer, I am curious as to how you get your green suit to show up if you use a green screen. Or is it just like secret geck magic? What green screen? Oh, okay. Maybe it's my computer then. All right, bye. (laughs) Yeah, that's a tough one. I hate giving advice, which is why I have an advice podcast. I hate giving advice because I I hate the idea that I'll tell somebody to do. I just I hope everyone understands when I say to do something, it's I'm talking to me 100 percent of the time because I fuck up a lot and I um, these are just things I'm trying to do. I fuck up and I'm not nice all the time and uh I'm tr- I'm trying I'm 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 with everyone else who calls me uh 
trying to uh, work on myself as a human being. And I guess I hate the idea that if you position yourself to a point where you're like giving advice, it somehow implies that you're above all of the things that you're giving advice on. And that, that implication makes me vastly uncomfortable. Um, so, you know, just th throwing it out there that I'm, uh, navigating this space with all of these people, um, you know, d d d d working on this shit myself. Okay.